Hello and welcome to Movia News Interviews, a special project that has been created to showcase the most influential people in the automotive industry. Today, my guest is a fascinating automotive professional with an impressive background and known for his pioneering ideas. It's a pleasure to present you Mr. Dan Van, the founder and chief editorial officer of Autopro, a 4x4 crossover lifestyle magazine, Caesar Temporis, and the founder and chairman of Autobest. Hello, and thank you for accepting my interview invitation. Thank you very much for the invitation. I'm uh, happy to talk to you and uh, I'm looking forward to your nice questions. Please be nice. <laughs> <laughs> I will, I promise. So to begin, can you tell us more about your professional journey in the automotive industry? Yeah, uh, it was quite a journey, you're right. Uh, as, as a profession, I am an uh, aerospace engineer. That's my first uh, degree. And uh, after that, I was uh, having another one, uh, uh, another university for uh, business and economic editor. Uh, this too was giving me the opportunity to understand deeply both the technical side of the uh, car industry, of all the new models, all the new technologies, but also the, the industry by itself in terms of financials, in terms of the way is organized, how big can be, and so on. Uh, with this background, I uh, I managed to understand more and more what uh, what is going on. Uh, I learned, and in these last uh, thirty years, I uh, made a lot of things, uh, including uh, Auto Pro, which was uh, the first uh, car magazine in Romania uh, after the Berlin uh, uh, wall falling or as we call it here in my own country after the revolution. Uh, I was founding uh, the first uh, uh, motor show in Romania together with some other guys. I was founding the Romanian Car of the Year, the Motoring Press Association. And uh, in the meantime, I was uh, uh, founding a lot of other magazines. Uh, some of them I sold, which uh, made me the first in, uh, in the region who sold ever in the car industry something to Germans because uh, my magazine Auto Show was bought by Burda Germany, which back then was kind of uh, a premier. Uh, but definitely uh, it's important to say that I, I, I was uh, uh, working like hell to make people understand uh, the car industry make people understand not necessarily what, what happened in the past, but mainly uh, what is going on in the future. Because uh, nowadays uh, we, we are all living in a disruptive industry, in a, di a disruptive uh, time, and uh, uh, it's more and more difficult to understand what is coming, how you will be better prepared for the future. Look to a simple thing, uh, five years ago, 10 years ago, uh, when someone was buying a car, was pretty sure about the future of this, uh, pretty sure about the residual value, pretty sure how much money you can get after three years or five years. Today, it's not so easy. Even the, the biggest companies uh, for evaluation cars in Europe are facing quite a dramatic shift. Uh, they, they, they try to understand how they can have a real evaluation because days with this... Uh, uh, trends I defined uh, more than uh, six years ago in, as a premier in Europe. Uh, these mega trends, which are uh, green technologies, uh, autonomous, uh, connected technologies, and ride sharing. With these trends, today a car could be fantastic, but in uh, two years to be obsolete. Uh, of course, it's, it's dramatic, sounds dramatic. But if you look to the latest years, how the things are developing in our industry, uh, if you look to the uh, electrification process, you can see that uh, it's dramatic, but it's also real. Speaking about the future, what do you think is the future of the automotive industry? Uh, that's, that's some answers we already gave uh, as Autovest on a European level. Uh, also myself on uh, in different speeches, Definitely it's electric, 
the future of uh, automobile is electric. Talking about passengers' cars, that's a fact, that's for sure. And even for uh, <clears throat> commercial vehicles, for uh, buses, uh, for trains, obviously, uh, are all of all of this will be electric. The discussion is uh, how we will produce the electricity on board. That's that's another subject. And here we have different technologies. Again, for passengers' cars, the future is electric with batteries. Uh, there is, to me, it's clear there is no other way. Uh, how you charge the batteries on the on the on the car? It's also a discussion. And here we can imagine uh, several options. The latest one, which is coming more and more in discussion, is the wireless uh, charging. And uh, as you know, Bianca, we just uh, had recently an interview, an exclusive interview with a specialist who accepted to explain a little bit more because uh, people are afraid to explain too much about these technologies. But uh, if you look to the longer uh, range transportation, like uh, commercial vehicles, definitely there, the hydrogen uh, fuel cell could be the solution. So generally speaking, the hydrogen is coming into the picture for long journeys. However, I predict that by 2025, we will have batteries, BEV, able to run with just one charge for uh, 1,000 kilometers. With such a range, that's really enough and then uh, you can go to a fast, a super fast charging station for another 1,000 kilometer in uh, 45 minutes or uh, 40 minutes. That will be in 2025. So practically, there there will be no reason to have no electric cars. There is no reason to keep the ICE engines. Thank you. Cars are not your only passion. Can you tell us more about the other projects you're involved in? With pleasure. Uh, the other half of my life uh, is not related to cars. It's related to watches and luxury. As you mentioned at the beginning, I'm the founder of uh, Caesar and Temporis. Both of them are, uh, both of these are uh, registered trademarks in Europe uh, of mine. Believe it or not, uh, um, you, you know, but people uh, who will look to this, uh, they will be surprised to find out that I am the owner of Caesar brand. So uh, as a joke, uh, dear uh, friends of Movia News, uh, when you eat a Caesar salad, think about me. Unfortunately, you don't pay even a dime to me. However, I am the owner of uh, Caesar. Now it's a joke because the Caesar salad has nothing to do with uh, Caesar brand and Caesar uh, concept. Uh, I, uh, I pioneered also in this industry uh, of luxury several things. Uh, one thing is the Caesar Honoris Hall of Fame, which is uh, one of the key uh, Hall of Fame dedicated to big personalities in the luxury industry. We have a lot of names uh, already induced here. Uh, I also pioneered uh, important awards called uh, Caesar Awards. Uh, dedicated to the world of luxury and in the in the world of uh, watches there are also here hall of fames the famous one is the temporis hall of fame which is uh, dedicated to exceptional master watchmakers designers and inventors in auto rogeri is the only one in the whole world that's absolutely amazing uh, I invented it, uh, I, uh, I did it properly. Now we have 25 uh, members already inducted in the last eight years, nine years. And uh, probably now it's too late for someone to start uh, just to copy what, uh, what I did. I also uh, designed watches and I am the author of some of the most successful limited editions uh, in the watch industry. Uh, I give you the example of uh, Hublot, Nasty Bank, dedicated to the Iliana Stase uh, tennis legend. I can uh, talk about the uh, Zenith uh, uh, Range Rover, which is my, my dear uh, project. It's a project I uh, built by making two giants, uh, Jaguar Land Rover, the company, and Zenith, which is a part of LVMH, Louis Vuitton company, to cooperate and even today this project is going on so i'm the author of of this 
there are also some other projects uh, like Chrono Suisse, Alfa Romeo, uh, like uh, Romain Jerome, uh, DNA Caesar. So it's uh, I'm actually the only one outside the so the Swiss watch industry accepted to do this. I I can tell you that I'm also involved in some other projects which are still going on, uh, which I can't reveal because uh, I can't yet, but I hope one day uh, when they will be ready to be public, I will be happy to, to talk about that, o about all this. Uh, of course, I'm passionate about uh, other things like coffee. We can talk hours about coffee, uh, about, uh, I don't know, uh, things, uh, cigars. By the way, I just uh, ended up uh, Caesar Cigar of the Year competition where it was it happened to be ended up yesterday evening. We have a winner. Uh, if someone is passionate about uh, about cigars, I can tell the winner is an aging room vibrato, a fantastic cigar which uh, was uh, the whole thing was tested blindly. In all my uh, competitions, like you know, in Auto Best, I am very careful to be very professionally organized, very neutral, very transparent and uh, very genuine, very authentic. We don't copy nobody in anything I'm doing. I'm not copying. Like in Autobest, you know, it, it, there is a lot of room for new uh, approach of these industries. What advice would you give to someone starting out in this automotive industry? Uh, 20 years, 30 years ago was enough to be passionate. It's, it was enough. With passion, you can do a lot of things, which is still true today, but is not anymore enough. So if if I would be asked by uh, by a young uh, person if uh, it's worth or not, how to do it, uh, to, to be in this industry, first of all, I will, of course, mention to be passionate. But if you want to be successful, you need to dedicate yourself uh, fully to this industry. Uh, you need to to work 14 hours a day you need you know what i mean uh, you need to to be immersed totally in this industry and to follow everything because in every second something is going on something is happening in the car industry it's one of the the speedest the quickest uh, uh, industry we have it's also very big. There are so many uh, companies, executives, and nowadays, if you look to the startups in the in the car industry, there are really uh, an impressive number. All of them for electric cars. I just noticed uh, these days uh, one of these startups. It happened to be someone I know very well. He managed to reach without producing one piece, just drawings, just plans, managed to sell this company for $2.4 billion. And I just uh, read in the media that he sold three or something like that, three, 400 units of these cars, which doesn't exist. You, it's unbelievable, dear friends, how this industry is going on and how things are developing under the electrification process umbrella. So. If you want to, to join, you have so many reasons. But if you want to join for the pleasure, forget about it. Don't, don't join because it's nothing about pleasure. Of course, pleasure is coming eventually. But before the pleasure, you have to work, you have to learn, you have to understand, you have to question yourself all the time. And if you are good enough, strong enough, brave enough, you can start questioning also the others. Mr. Vadia, thank you very much for your answer, answers. It was a pleasure. Thank you very much, uh, Bianca. It was a pleasure for me too. And I, by the way, I wish you good luck in, in all your endeavors because I know you are very ambitious. You are a workaholic <laughs> like myself. So uh, I, I tend to say you will succeed. That's <laughs> thank you. My, my <laughs> prognosis, my <laughs> prediction for you. Thank you very much. With great pleasure. Thank you also from my side.